This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Baruch Hashem. The Midrash, the Gemara, the Midrash is telling us about that time that Moses went up to heaven to bring down the Torah for Am Israel, for the wide world. Now, it's written in another place that every time that you come to learn Torah, you need to start your learning like now we receive the Torah from Mount Sinai. So means that every time that you are about to learn Torah, that you come to learn Torah, so everything that took place in Mount Sinai, you should realize that it's happening with you right now. Like even if you are all alone and it's the middle of the night and back then it was a whole nation and it was early in the morning, still, even though that Moses was there and now you can't see him, you can find all the aspects, all the details that have been described to us by the righteous ones in the Bible. You can find those aspects while you sit and learn Torah. So, when Moses went up to Mount Sinai, so the Creator called him to come closer to him. And when, when Moses was standing over there, the angels, that we know that they are made out of fire, were arguing. They were refusing. They were trying to convince Hashem, the Creator, not to give the Torah to people, to human beings, from good reasons. We can disgrace and ruin, destroy every good thing. We know it. Can kill relationships, can destroy children, can hurt the most loving and caring people in the world. Like people can be very hard, can be very far from sensitivity and from truth. In many aspects, you can understand the angels that are trying to protect this amazing thing that is the most precious thing, the wisdom of the Creator, a hidden treasure. But Hashem, against all their arguments, against all their claims, is saying to Moses, come, I want you to answer them. Moses starts shaking, he's scared. He is now about to confront angels that can kill him with, with their breath. So Moses, the man of truth, is looking at Hashem and telling him, I'm afraid they can burn me with their fire. From that we can understand how dangerous it is to learn Torah. There is a danger. You want to bring down Torah, you want to reveal some understandings, you want to bring down knowledge, ancient knowledge, things that came from the peak of the world, from the world to come, from heaven, heavenly wisdom. You're about to confront the angels. Hashem is telling Moshe, come, I want you to answer. Moshe is saying, I'm scared. Hashem tells him, hold my throne of honor. In that you'll have the power to answer them. Don't be scared. We need to attach ourselves to the throne of honor. Like we said, all the aspects that took place in that time of Mount Sinai, more than 3,000 years ago, are taking place in our lives while we are about to learn Torah. What is that throne of honor? What is that aspect? Of course there are many aspects. 
One of them is the souls of the nation that is called Israel and the face of Jacob that had the same portrait like the first man, Adam, is carved on the throne of honor. That face, the face of Jacob, the face of first man, Adam, is shining and being seen from the throne of honor. Those are the souls of Israel, that Israel is the name that's been given to Jacob. How can we attach ourselves to that light? Almost every night before I go to sleep, <coughs> when I close my eyes, lying in my bed, so Hashem, from certain reasons that He knows why, is opening the eyes of my mind to see certain things. Now, those things that I'm seeing before I go to sleep are simple things. I don't see, maybe you, maybe someone that doesn't see that will interpret that as something high, something divine, something important, and it is important. But every detail, every simple thing that we do every day is important. Like if you're chewing gum while walking in the street, so not to throw the um, wrap, wrapper. Listen, English is a lousy language. <laughs> Every single time I'm looking for a word and I find it and you're answering me, I hear a word that can be used for at least five different things. <laughs> it's so horrible. So now you want me to throw the wrapper? <laughs> oh, with the W. All right. I'll keep it in mind while I'm chewing. Okay, so not to throw that wrapper with W on the floor <laughs> while you're walking in the street is, is, is an amazing thing, is a very important thing. It shows a lot about you. It's a very meaningful thing, really, to have that intention, not to throw your garbage on the floor, on the ground, on, on the earth, on, 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 on the world of, of Hashem, Hashem's world. It shows a lot of respect. So those things that I'm seeing in my mind they're simple things, but they're very, very deep, very meaningful. And I'll tell you some. And by that we can understand what it means to hold yourself to the throne of honor, to the face of Jacob, to the face of first man, Adam. There was a righteous man in the generation of the Tanaim that had some kind of clinical death. He died. He went up to heaven. And when he came back, so his father asked him, what did you see? What did you see over there in heaven? So his son told him, I saw an upside down world. I saw that the world is upside down. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said that when a person is looking at the mirror, he sees himself from the outside. But if you would know what's going on inside of you, not inside your body, not your blood, your veins, your bones, your muscles, spiritually, inside your soul, if you would know what's going on inside, would be able to recognize what's going on inside, you would see that you are completely wired to the rest of the world. When you look at things from your eyes out, you see the separation. You see your body. You see the world that is called in the Zohar Kadosh, Alma de Shikra, the world of lie. You see the mistake. You see something that does not really exist 
in reality. Even though that for us, that lives in the fake world, that's reality. Someone knocks on your door. Hey, there is someone in the door. It's reality. For you, it's reality. Now he's knocking. Okay, I need... Or that I'm opening, or that I'm not, but like something needs to be done. Like I need to take a decision because in reality, someone knocks on my door right now. Okay. That's your reality because you live in a fake world. But the real truth is what goes on in the other side, backstage of your fake reality that you are trapped in. And this is that upside down world, the other side of the world, the world that is representing the truth. And we'll touch it and we'll understand it a little bit more today. And I'm paying a lot for this knowledge, just for you to know. <laughs> to be able to transfer this knowledge to you, and I'm happily doing it, I pay a lot, a lot of commission. The, the tuition for my, t for my teachings, for my learning is very high. It's very expensive to go to my school. Now, the inner world of a person, it's the world of the souls. That's the world that the Creator is at with no coverings, not behind no <laughs> curtains. The curtains are here. In this world that we are now experiencing, now you receive a fruit. That fruit look with certain colors. He has certain weight, measures, certain flavor, certain mm, texture built from certain particles. He has vitamins and sugar and fibers. There's a peel to it. There are seeds inside of it. One that was all, the, all of his physical history. But that's only the outside. Those are the coverings. What really happens inside of that apple is that he, that fruit, is that he, it, holds life. Certain life. There is a spark of life in it. When you're going to say, Bore peri aetz, you're going to bless Hashem and you're going to bite that apple, some of the spiritual spark, that life that is treasured inside of it, will pass on to you. And then that spark, that portion of spirit will join you to your soul and will become one with you. Not physically, also physically in a way, but mainly spiritually. It will give you a certain additional part to your soul. And on that we're saying the blessing in the end, that the Creator saw created many spirits, many souls with their lackings. And we're thanking you on everything that you created to revive our spirits that we are alive, that you created them, the fruits, all the food, all those things that we smell, that you created them to give us life through them. On that we're blessing you that you are the source of life. And Hashem Himself, He is the source of life. He is life itself. That's why one of His names is Chai HaChaim. That He, the one that lives life. Which life He lives? All kinds of life. Inside of you, Betoch Ami Anochi Yoshavet. Inside my people I live, Hashem is saying. Build a temple for me and I'll live inside of you, Hashem is saying. Hashem, He is the soul. When He created the world, He sent that spirit of life into the inside of creation. Sent the breath of, of, of life into our bodies from within. Like into all aspects of creation. The world receives its energy from inside. And all the fruits, they're alive from inside. And the animals, they're alive from inside. They will eat, they won't eat. They have an inner source of life that is pushing them forward. And that's Hashem. 
That's the Creator that lives inside of us. That's the power of life, the energy that is filling us from within. Because it's written, There is no site, uh, place, location that is empty from the Creator's presence. He is everywhere. He is surrounding and covering everything with physicality, with physical aspects of creation, like measures and sizes, all kinds of constrictions. And from within, with His godly spirit that gives life to those forms, to those figures, to those shapes. When you live your life like every other person, you're basically disconnected from the truth, from Hashem. Because you see the world of lie. You live in a fake world. That that's reality. Like if that person now is going to damage me, I've been damaged. If that person is going to take my apple, <coughs> now I will lack of something that I assumed that was mine. But that's not the truth. Because when that person took that apple, by that he shown you that that apple was not yours. Now it doesn't mean that that person is not a thief. He might be also a thief if he decided to steal it. But he stolen something that was belonged to him in the first place and you lost something only in your mind because it was not yours to eat. The fact is that you didn't eat it. It's not yours. There are many aspects to those things and it's very deep. But still, in the end of the day, everything that we see with our eyes, everything that we hear with our ears, that we smell, that we taste, that we can feel and touch with our senses, with our hands, all those things are external things that belong to this world of coverings, of blockings, means of darkness. Even if sometimes that darkness can shine in a bright light, it's only because that the level of our awareness is very, very low and it's hard for us to define between good and bad, between spiritual and physical. And then sometimes to see the ocean, to see the sunset, to see the sunrise, to see amazing view, for us we're going to feel, oh, it's such a spiritual feeling experience when it's not spiritual at all. Nothing spiritual in the physical water of the sea. Nothing spiritual in the sky. It's made out of air. This air is a physical thing. It built and, and, and created from atoms. It's a physical thing. Maybe it holds spirituality, but it's hidden from your eyes. You cannot really see the spirit of the air. You cannot really see the spirit of the sea. You don't see the life inside of it. Even if you see a fish <laughs> swim in animation that is a fake reality, you can mistake to think that that fish is real when really it was only an animation. With today technology, you can see that, that you can create reality that will mislead you to think that, oh wow, I saw, the, I saw that fish. No, no, no. People were sitting on their computers for hours, built and designed programs, and they're faking reality. And you cannot hold that fish ever in the world because it's never been created as a fish. It's only an, Ill a, 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 an, an illusion. An illustration. All this world is exactly like that. It's certain aspects and layers of illusions when the real truth is still hidden from us always inside. How do you attach yourself to that? And how you separate yourself from this illusion? By connecting yourself to your soul. Means start working developing an inner awareness to your inner voice, to the voice of your soul. Because the Creator, He chose for Himself a shofar to blow through, to call us from within, a speaker. And that speaker is the voice of your soul. And from inside of you, you can hear the voice of heaven. Now many people are asking me, all right, but I have so many voices and I don't want to spend my time in a special <laughs> hospital. So how would I know which voice to listen to and from which to ignore? 
The answer is simple. Hashem is good. And the devil is bad. There is a good inclination and there is a bad inclination. As long as the voice is good, means that you're not hurting no one by the regular and normal way of understanding what is good, to define between good and bad. You don't need to be a genius. If you hurt someone and that person now will cry, will hurt, will be ashamed, will be destroyed by you, you can call yourself good. If he is calling you bad, something is wrong here. Something you need to. But if that person is lying and blaming you to be bad when you are checking yourself and you see that you are good, so then the problem belongs to him. But again, if you're not checking yourself to see am I good or not, Was I generous or not? Was I kind or not? Sensitive or not? Selfish or not? If you're not checking yourself, measuring, observing, looking, doing tshuva, trying to do whatever you can to find the truth about yourself, so you cannot just argue and say, no, yeah, I'm good, I'm perfectly good, yeah, I'm fine. You cannot say that unless you checked. We are talking about people that are trying to be honest. Real truthful people that are working hard on themselves to find the voice of truth that is speaking to them from within. When you are on that task, when you are trying to find the truth, and you listen to your inner voice, and you try to recognize that voice, you found Hashem. You heard the voice of Hashem. Now I'll explain to you what it means that a person is able to say, I saw the upside down, the opposite side of this world. When Hashem is telling you and commanding you, and it's written in the verse, you should listen to my voice, all right? Hashem commands you, follow me, listen to my voice. You need to do what I command you to do, all right? Wonderful. If you're going to see that verse coming to you in this world, this fake world of illusion, if you will describe Hashem as a person, let's say, as a God, standing in front of you, someone else, not you. God, Hashem, the Creator, and He's telling you, you should follow me. So what you will assume, that you should go out of your place and start walking, start changing yourself. Start doing and following what He is commanding you to do, right? That's like, He told me to listen to Him. If I want to do that, I should start walking and keeping and doing whatever He tells me to do. Amazing. Sounds about right, but it's a fake world, so it's a mistake. What should you do? Hashem told you. I live inside of you. For an example, Hashem told us, I'm hiding behind the wall. I'm waiting for you behind the wall. Now, which wall is that? It's talking about the western wall. It's talking about the Kotel Amaravi in Jerusalem. The Deshkinah, the spirit of heaven, never went away from that place. Now, people today in our days, are coming to the western wall, standing in front of the wall, and praying to a God that they feel that is standing behind the wall. Where? In the place of the temple, right? Because we believe that the temple was located on the mount or behind the western wall. When we're coming from the old city, the free Jerusalem, we're standing in front of the wall, the wall is in front of us, and the location of the temple of the old Beit HaMikdash is over there, behind the wall. So we, in our twisted mind, thinking to ourselves that the Creator is over there, in the place of the temple, right? But listen, guys, those verses been written to the people that lived their lives in the real free Jerusalem while Beit HaMikdash was built. So the people were standing in the opposite side. They were standing there in the temple. And Hashem told them, don't worry, I will always be there in the western wall. 
means that today when we are standing in the Western Wall, Hashem is with us. Hashem is not behind the wall. Hashem's promise that He told us, I will always be behind the wall, is where we are. We are behind the wall. The Creator is with you. Now when you want to follow that commandment of Hashem that told you, listen to my voice, if you put Hashem in your mind, outside of your being means in the verses, in the Bible, in the commandments and orders of the rabbis, of the people, of the teachers, whatever they tell you to do, you must run and do, and you follow them in an outside way, in an external way, means that if he told you to go to the right, you go to the right. And if he told you to go to the left, you go to the left. And you don't check what's going on inside your inner system. As a result of those commandments, you're not attached to the inner voice of your soul. You're going to go to the opposite direction. Because when Hashem tells you, listen to my voice, He's talking to you not from outside. He's talking to you from inside. <clears throat> now how are you going to understand the verse, Shema Bekoli, listen to my voice. If I need now to listen to my voice, and I'm looking at it from within and not from outside, I need to listen to my voice, to my inner voice to the voice of my soul that is the speaker and the shofar that Hashem is using to talk to me from within. Hashem is talking to you from your mind. Hashem is talking to you through your soul that is a channel, that is channeling an ancient wisdom from within. You need to find the truth of Hashem inside of you means that you need to listen and to be aware to your thoughts, to your feelings. Now there is an amazing animal, we'll call it a deer. And that deer is so dearly important, we care about him so much. And he's a genius, you know why? Because when he walks in the forest and suddenly he hears a crack of a broken branch, some step, some voice, immediately he stops everything he is doing. He was in the middle of a fantastic meal. He just found something so delicious, you never ate such grass in your life, ever. Never tasted something. You can faint from the pleasure that he receives from that bush. But in the moment that he hears that something is wrong, all the world is stopped. He doesn't care. Why? Because he cares about his life. And what is he doing? He's counting on his instincts with 100% of his power. He will listen. He will look. He will smell. He will put his ears to that direction. He will listen. He will do whatever it takes to watch over himself. He will start walking to the back. He will check. He will bend. He will become taller. He will stand on two legs instead of four. He will do whatever it takes to listen to his instincts, to the voice of his spirit that is warning him from a danger from within his thoughts. He's tuned to his inner voice. And this is why he is not the problematic one in this world. And who is? We are. Because we are disconnected from our senses. We're ignoring the inner voice of our soul because we are scared what other people will think, what will take place, because our eyes and our awareness is stuck in the exile of the outside world. That's what that happened to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, after they ate from that forbidden fruit, suddenly they realized that they were naked. They saw themselves, from the, for themselves for the first time from outside. Before of that, they were spiritual. They were observing on creations from the eye of their mind. 
They saw everything in a clear and open mind. They were not supposed to use their eyes as the main, how you say, mishanet thing to lean? No. Something you lean on. Mishanet. Okay, something to lean on. They were not leaning, counting, basing their eyesight. What? Relying? No, that's the, that's the act. They were not relying, counting on, well, we can use that. For, on their eyes, on their eyes, as the main tool to look and to check and, and to inspect and to understand life. In the beginning of their creation, they were counting on the wisdom that was very loud and clear in their minds from within. They were spiritual. Now today, we're able to achieve that thing as well. Every person can go out of his selfishness from being so self-centered and focus in physicality by taking a long deep breath and maybe on daily basis and strong decisions to reconnect yourself to yourself, to your inner senses. When you're coming to a certain place, to an office, to, to a meeting, to talk to someone, you have thoughts, you have feelings. You have certain assumptions. Now again, if you see that those voices that are talking to you from within are negative. Oh, you're not going to make it. Oh, you're so horrible. For sure you're going to fail. They're about to kick you. Look, whatever. All those foreign thoughts that are not positive are not the thoughts that are coming from within. Are not the thoughts of heaven that are telling you always count on me. I'm with you. Don't be scared. Because I'll help you. They are the voices of the evil inclination that is disgracing you and breaking your self-esteem for thousands of years of exile showing you defaults and lackings and blaming you for all of those ones when really in reality all those lackings and all those defaults all the weaknesses of yours are only coming as a result of the exile that we are at the reason that you today is not the holiest person in the world is not your fault you born to a certain family, in a certain community, certain area, certain place, certain friends were around you, siblings, all of them were not angels that were rising, raising you on, on, on the most holiest path in the world, right? You had the television around you, and you had the movies, and you had bad friends, very bad friends, some of them were horrible friends, some of them were... Some of them were not friends, were enemies. And they hurt you. And they broke your self-esteem. That reality that you born into against your thoughts, against your will, against your understanding, being forced to get out to the world in that place. And that place affected you. And that place was also affected by situations that took place hundreds of years ago, maybe thousands of years of exile and war and people are running away from their houses and because of fires and because of plagues and because of storms and poverty and drought and wars and, and, and I don't know what. And people are suffering for thousands of years and the shape and the character and the emotional structure of our parents, of our grandparents was destroyed before we came to the world. So you just came now to the world 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 70 years ago. You came to a twisted place already, to a broken and cracked world already. It's not your fault that you carry scars from wars that you participate in. It's not your fault that you are filthy from the mud that you've been kicked into. From swimming in the swamps of darkness because you've been dropped in those places and been abandoned in those places and you are trying with all your power to find your way back somehow. Now you're going to blame yourself 
on the place that you started your process at, the place that you've been put in, in the godly plan, it's not your fault. You cannot judge yourself like on that. But the evil inclination makes a joke on you, on us, trying and fooling us by blaming us on the failures of a failed world that was never meant to represent the light. The name of the world in the ancient language of Hebrews is Olam. The word Olam is coming from the word He'elem. He'elem is a, 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 is, 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 a, is a concept that is hiding, that is blocking. That's the nature of the world, to block. Who is shining the world? You're going to say Hashem, right? But most of people believe that the sun is. Most people think that the lights of the lamps are, are, are shining the world, that fire brings out light. But when you look at that light of the sun, of the, of, the, of the light bulbs, when you look at them, they are blocking the truth from you to recognize the God that is behind that curtain. So the truth is that the sun is really a shade, is really a curtain that is blocking, filtering the real light of heaven, and brings it to you in a certain shape, when really that light is coming from a place beyond shape, that is above physicality, that doesn't have certain colors or smells or texture. It's all spiritual, it's all divine, it's all godly. Now when us, we, our eyes are stuck in this world, we're experiencing one world. Which world? The world of separation. Your individuality. Me. Even your wife, even your best friend, even your husband, even your child, even someone that now you and him are alone in the desert and you're going to do everything possible to save each other's life. Like best friends in the world. David v. Jonathan. Alright? Now two siblings in a war, they will never gonna stop protecting and doing whatever they can for each other. Still, they are looking at life from different angles. Even if they have so-called the same goal, it's not the same. Because they are in a way, in a way, are different. Something is different in them. They're looking from different eyes. If one of them is blind, colorblind, they cannot see the same thing. They're not in the same height. They have different concepts, different ideas, different mm, reasons. He will fight for his brother because of his love to his brother. And the brother will fight for him because he will not let him die for the parents not to be sad and broken for losing one of their children. They will do the same to protect each other, but in different ways. When you look at the world from your eyes out, you experience a lonely world. A world of separation. You are in that place alone. Now, let's take this conversation to a different place. All right? Miami Beach. Okay. Now we're in Miami Beach. It's sunrise. The beach is empty. Baruch Hashem. No people. <laughs> Only the fish are swimming. You are in Hawaii. In the islands. The sun is rising from the sea. The view, the sight is magnificent, is beautiful. You see an amazing group of colorful fish swimming in the shallow water. It's amazing sight. What you see with your eyes? The world of separation. You see individual fish swimming. Maybe they're in a group, but you are interpreting, you are understanding, you are realizing, you see with your eyes, with your mind, oh, it's beautiful, I'll take a picture, uh, I'm sorry I cannot um, um, hunt one of them, uh, whatever, you're crazy, you go with your craziness, everyone with his thoughts, okay? Now, I'm asking you, inside one of those fish, what there is, there is a personality, there is someone over there that is swimming, with his friends. Now he experienced a different world than the world that you see. And now his partner, his friend, 
that is swimming with him, a second fish in that group. He's experiencing a whole different world than his friend, like that you and your brother in the war experiencing a different world. Everyone in this creation has a different world that he's experiencing. How? Because they are all looking outside from their eyes out. But inside of every one of those creations, all the fish in the sea, all the animals, all the birds, all human beings, even the tr fruits and trees and grass, the sky, the, the ground, every particle of this creation holds a certain spirit inside of him, a heavenly portion of godliness. That's the spirit of life that we described before that is connecting all those creations from within to be one soul. That's the soul of creation. Now when you look outside from your eyes, from your eyes out, you experience only your limited world. But when you close your eyes and you look deep inside, maybe it will take you a time, but in that moment you start seeing the world. You see all the worlds. And I saw that. It's crazy, right? But I saw that. I tell you, I went to sleep yesterday night and for one hour and a half, I saw those sights. I saw that incredible ability that is installed inside each and every single one of us because we're not different. We're all built in the same structure, in the same way. You have your body, and inside that body there is a godly soul. And that's your power to see. How do you see? With your eyes? No. Your eyes has two holes in them that makes you able to see. You don't see because of your eyes. You see through your eyes. Your soul see because it can float because it can go through the eyes. If a person's eyes is closed, he cannot see anymore. The soul cannot function. It can function in a very limited way because the pupils are tiny and built and designed by the Creator in a certain way that will limit your ability to see to a certain amount that's been given to every person. Animal sees different. Different fish in the sea see different visions. They see with their eyes different things than us. You can see because there are holes in your eyes. You can hear because there are holes in your ears. You can smell because the same reason and you can pronounce because you can bring out voice from your mouth because of the same thing. That the Creator, that His eyes are wandering and walking and searching the world, gave you the power of eyesight. And the God, the Creator, that He listens and hears every prayer of every mouth and even the desire of animals before they're screaming, He gave you the power to listen and He gave it to you because it's His to give. And He's the one that said and made the world and gave you the power of speech. And He's that one that it's written on Him that He was sad, that He was upset because the creations disappointed Him. And He's happy when He sees certain things happen and take place. And therefore you are able to experience the same things because you are godly. Because you are a godly soul. And as a godly soul, you have the free choice in your hand to choose if to live your life based on your surroundings, the outside world, that is the world of illusions, the Alma de Shika, the world of lie, or that you're going to start connecting yourself to the voice of your soul that is always guiding you how to make another step inner to an inner truth to achieve completion in your faith and in your understanding of your true being, a portion of heaven from above. means to know God. Now the voice is talking to us from our hearts, from our mind, 
And that voice, like the verse is saying, Lecha amar libi bakshu panai tamid. Your heart as a messenger of the Creator is telling you always, bakshu panai tamid, look for my face. The Creator that is talking to us from within is telling us always, look for my face. Means, try to recognize my individual, private supervision on you in life. In life situations, when someone is talking to you, when that door is closed or being opened for you, look for the face of Hashem. The face is the organ in the person's body that reflects the emotions, that shows the feelings, the intention of the person. If he's angry, you're going to see anger on his face. If he's welcoming and smiling, you're going to see that on his glowing and shining face. The face are the main representor of the person. The world is the representor, the one that reflects, the reflector of the Creator's face. And He has a complete face, but we're not able to see it completely. Like we know that we now just described our world as an individual world of separation. I am who I am. And with those eyes I see the world. But the Creator, His Spirit is coming from that upside down world, from the opposite side. When He's telling you, listen to my voice, you don't need to listen to that one's voice. You need to listen to that one's voice. Your voice. The voice of truth. Ask yourself, who is Hashem for me? Who is God for me? Who is the Creator for me? Listen to that one inside of you. He is my hope. Listen to voices of hopes inside of you. He is the good. Listen to voices of good from within. He is loyalty. He is brotherhood. He is friendship. He is honesty. He is all the good attributes. When you hear those voices inside of you, it's Him. It's the speaker of heaven. Now how much can you pay for a class like that? Tell me. <laughs> you can't pay, right? You can't. You can't value that class. You cannot say, all right, you know what? It was worth $1,000. It was worth 2000 You cannot count. You cannot say an amount. Because it's a life-changing class for you. But the Creator gave it to you for free. Me, I'm paying for those things. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you're also paying. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. But the Creator is revealing. He's revealing His godliness to us from within. And that's the beauty of this creation. That for thousands of years people were walking and going to the opposite direction. And it's okay. We cannot blame no one. But finally the Creator decided to call us. And where is He calling us? From within. Because the Creator is Pnimiut. He's the inside of creation. He's the wisdom that is above. He's coming from a place that is above place. He's coming from a place that is above time. And that place is only inside of you. Open your eyes. What can you see right now? You can see bookcases. You can see uh, the ark. You can see a person. You can see speakers. You can see um, um, iPhones. You can see tables. You can see people. I can see people. You can see details. You can see windows, colors, paints, roof. You can see many things. What do you see? You see definitions. You see dividings. You see a lie. You see something that is not real. Because there is no place that is empty from His godliness. And you cannot see the godliness in every particle of creation. Can you recognize Hashem in this uh, line? You cannot. In this string? You cannot. Can you see Hashem in my watch? You cannot. It's a watch. That's a shirt. That's a person. You cannot see God. But when you close your eyes, close your eyes for a second, what can you see? 
you're going to say, I can't see anything. But if I'll tell you now, see the ocean, you can see the ocean. If I'll tell you, look at the sky, you can see the sky. Maybe it's not as perfect as if you would stand in the beach and look at the sky and look at the sea, but you can see, look at the clouds, you can see clouds, look at the sun, you can you imagine you see the sun. You can use the power of the imagination, the power of your mind to see everything, to see treasures, to see fruits, to see bounty, to see success, to see happiness, to see glory, to see days of redemption. I saw the day of redemption. I can tell you about it. In the day of redemption. You cannot imagine, but I'll tell you. It's going to be so sweet because everything that you will imagine, you will see in front of your eyes. Everything that you will desire with your good desire, with your holy hopes, you will see. In one moment above time, the Creator will change the way of His supervision on the world that only the good will take place. All the creation will reflect the godly good will of revealing His endless loving mercy on all of His creations. And everything will function corresponding to that godly plan. The world will show you His glory and His goodness and it will be revealed to all. People in China, people in Tibet, people in Quebec, people in South Africa, people in Saudi Arabia, people in the Holy Land of Israel, in Egypt, in Jordan, people in Switzerland, in Sweden, in Romania, in Russia, in United States of America, people from four corners of earth will see the godly truth. Everyone in that moment's mind will be aimed to one purpose, to glorify, to praise, to, to thank, to appreciate, to help, to express, to do good, to reveal the truth of their understanding that there is one Hashem Elokei Israel Melech, the God the chosen Am Israel from all the nations to reveal His godliness, His goodness through them out to the world. Through the worlds of every individual. And everyone will experience it. The Eskimos will go out of their igloos and going to start walking or traveling with their snow sliders to Jerusalem. You don't get it. The Chinese will walk on the Chinese wall toward Jerusalem. It will take place and it will be a magnificent journey for all. When they will be tired somewhere on the road, the best place that they would dream of sleeping, of relaxing, of resting, of eating at, will be in front of their eyes. The best hotel, the best villa, the best apartment, the best amazing tent. If you like to sleep in the nature, your journey will take you through the most f fantastic views and sights. You can never imagine. You can fly on the wings of eagles. You can fly with your will if you will want and desire it. All your dreams will come true. Best shoes, best phones, best friends, all your beloved ones are with you, everyone together as one. The creation will show the power of God completely. This is not a fantasy. Jewish people, religious people, orthodox people, believers, I don't know who, if they're not understanding what we are doing here, they're still blind in darkness. They cannot see. Now none of us is better than no one else, just that Hashem is choosing the humble ones to reveal the truth through to the world. 
And we are humble. You know why we're humble? Not because we're better than someone else. Just because the, the Creator made sure that we will be humbled by life completely. He broke our self-esteem using the evil inclination and He took us in a journey of 2,000 years. And every day we achieved another thing in a different lifetime, in a different situation. Another spark, and another completion, another tikkun, and another achievement, and another success, and another mitzvah and another good deed, and another wonderful action that we achieved, we're rising the sparks, and there is a certain amount of sparks that needs to rise, and we don't know how many sparks we lack of, but in one moment it will be enough. And when the time will come, the supervision of the world will just change from blocking the light of heaven to shining it upon all of us. And then the animals will not hunt each other and you won't have no more predators, no more anger, no more sicknesses, no illnesses, no sadnesses, no poverty. Everyone are blooming. Everyone are succeeding. Everyone are happy and healthy and live forever eternal life after the resurrection of the dead, the ancestors, the forefathers, your great-grandparents, all the generations are standing for their trial, their heavenly trial that will reveal to everyone the godly complete plan of the ancient days of before time. To explain to us that all this world is a creation. And we are just now experiencing it through our time tunnels. We are experiencing certain things in time because time is a certain limitation that we've been handcuffed to. We are prisoners in a temporary world when the world is not temporary. Our world is temporary. When we are looking with our temporary eyes to the outside world, this world has a certain limit of time, thank God. But when our mind will look deep into our high levels of awareness to meet the truth, that can be recognized because you know the truth. Because when you lie, you know that you lie. When you're afraid, you know that you're afraid. When you love, you know that you love. When you enjoy, you know that you enjoy. When you want, you know that you want. And if you don't want, you know that you don't want. You know the truth. Inside of you, you know the truth. The problem is that we're ignoring it. That we rather to ignore the inner voice of truth and to follow our fears. No, no, what, I'm going to close my eyes. No, no, and if someone will come, and if someone is looking at me, and if someone is thinking about it, and no, I don't need, no, you know, I'm going to open my eyes. You don't want to count on Hashem. And that's the problem. Because in the moment that we're going to count on Him, He will reveal His godliness to us all in no time. And we're going to live for 1,000 years in our healthy bodies with all of our beloved ones as one united group, as one person with one heart. And you know who we are? We're the soul of Adam and Eve. And that's the shape that is carved on the throne of honor. And that's how you're going to find the power to bring down Torah to the world in a way that you will be protected. To reveal the godly truth to the world and that it won't damage you. No envious of any angel can harm you when you are connected to your spiritual roots from within. When you are the soul of Adam and Eve. And you are the soul of Adam and Eve. Because if you have a soul, so that soul is coming from the soul of Adam and Eve. 
It might come also through other people that lived in different generation, that your soul was part of them as branches from the same tree, and you came in different lifetimes, in different bodies, but the one that is completing everything is that one that you are in right now. And we are amazing. We are amazing. Because we are the chosen ones. We are those ones that have been chosen by the Creator. And we don't know exactly why. But it's that humble mindset of ours that is allowing that ancient knowledge to take place in our minds. It's our good will. It's our dedication for the truth. It's our holy desire for good. It's our honesty. It's our generosity. It's those attributes that are reflecting godliness from within that are pulling godliness from outside for us to hear that message and to receive and digest and understand that ancient knowledge. Not everyone today are worth it for that knowledge. And we should pray for each other, for those ones that are blind and deaf to hear and to hear, to hear and to see, that they cannot recognize that light, that they're still suffering and arguing and fighting and battling. No, 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 screaming. Hysterical people that are suffering, abused and hurt people that we need to have mercy for, to pray for them, that their eyes will be opened. And the judgments and the trials that will be the punishment for the evil ones are something that the Creator Himself will make sure to do. It's not our job. Kel nekamot Hashem. The Creator, He's the God of revenge. When you will be focused on enjoying the redemption, they will disappear in darkness behind your back. You won't be part of that process at all. They will just go down to darkness, into the lowest places of hell and going to disappear over there in that melting pot of darkness. Because that they also filled the amount of evil, of negativity, of cruelty, that they could have in their lifetimes and the Creator will judge and the Creator will decide and our job is to save lives to protect and defend souls of honest people of weak people of people that we care about and to do as much as we can with all our power to reveal His godliness to His creations to His children to tell you that He lives inside of you. To tell your friend that He lives inside of him. That He can meet the Creator. Not that He has to go with you to where you're going. You're on different lanes and it's okay. Let Him be. Just help Him to find Himself. There is no place for both of you to walk together. It's not exist in this world. You can walk side by side. You can care. You can love. You can support each other. You can lean and count on each other. That's okay. But you should experience your life from within in your own unique way and to listen to the voice of heaven, the heavenly voice that is speaking to you in your own unique way, that He chose you as His own child, experiencing the world with you from within in a complete way. That's the godly blessing. Be one with Him while He is one with you. And by that you will go deep, slowly, slowly. It's a path. It's a journey. But slowly, slowly, one inch and another inch and another mile and another mile in. Going deeper into your mind, into your faith, into your deep understanding of the secret of creation. And then you will experience the worlds. 
In one day, you will find yourself out of your own tube, out of your own channel, experiencing the world from a different angle, from a divine point of view, watching and seeing things from above, from the upside down world, from the opposite side of creation, from the eternal side, from within. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.